Hello guys, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again. Uh, unfortunately, due to time zone differences, my climb for Winter only really just started, but I'm going to talk about the deck that I've been using to climb through the gutters of uh, Platinum at the moment. That's going to be the uh, Champion Endless uh, Crimson. The type. Some people call it Crimson Elusive Burn. Some people just call it Elusive Burn. Some people call it Noxus Ionia Aggro. I'm just going to call it Elusive Burn for the sake of the video. This is a deck that I'm going to be using to probably climb to Diamond quite easily. This deck is literally insane, and it's like no better time to be playing this to punish every Harmoning a player on ladder, even though I've got like a bit of a unlucky loss here. Like unless you draw absolutely shockingly and your opponent draws perfectly against Heimerdinger, then you're going to get a loss. Anyway, we're eight and two so far with the elusive burn, which is no joke. This deck is definitely very powerful. I would highly recommend it. And because there's no champions, there's no reason not to play it, guys. It's, it's literally, literally insane. Let's jump across and have a look at the deck quickly, and we'll try and teach you how you can pilot it to victory and reach diamond quite quickly. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I'll see you in a minute. Right, so normally when I do these videos, I tend to go quite into detail with my card descriptions and explain how a deck works. But I think for the sake of videos and people's time uh, in that fact, I'm going to actually try and make this a bit more easy to digest and just like tell you the rough idea and then you just go ahead and play it and then you're going to be able to figure it out as you go. Because sometimes playing a deck is really where you find all the practice from. So without further ado, I'm going to break it up a bit, go from the bottom to the top, Elixir of Wrath easy for like chucking it onto elusive units and pushing past and finishing off your opponent or getting unexpected trades. Uh, Navori Blade Scout, uh, two, uh, one mana two one with elusive, great for pushing, great for comboing with Green Glade Duo, uh, Precious Pet, it's just a very well-rounded early game minion, this is going to kind of cover your early game these three cards here. Crimson Disciples, if you haven't seen it by now, it's one of the most powerful Noxus cards and a huge activator for blood transfusion to kind of like protect your board and just do a lot of nonsense with this card. This card all around is just very powerful and it can be very combo-y. So be careful for this one. It's This is like one of your big, big win conditions most of the time. Uh, Green Glade Duo, two mana, two one with Elusive, which gets buffed every time you play an ally. Uh, just be a bit wary of how you play this, but very powerful. Sometimes you're just gonna kind of play it, hope that it sticks, but sometimes you can actually uh, navigate around and set up a really powerful Green Glade Duo turn. Uh, Legion, uh, sorry, Imperial Demolitionist. This is usually just used as a semi-finisher. Uh, sometimes you can play it for a little bit of tempo or board presence, but most of the time, activating this on cards like a Crimson Disciple or finishing off your opponent's great. Uh, quick tip, if you have other two drops to play, most of the time you might be more considerate on not playing Demolitionist, unless you need the HP on the unit. Never play this uh, by itself either, unless you're desperate, unless you're facing like an aggro deck. Uh, Legion Grandia, 2 mana 3 1, which is going to deal 2 damage with the last breath effect. Uh, very powerful and very, very oppressive if they can't even clear it immediately. If this gets to hit face once, it's usually a GG. A uh, Novori Conspirator, great for combo with cards like, let's say, Novori Blade Scout to re grant it elusive because this only gets elusive once you play it. Uh, for also replaying Demolitionists. Or sometimes you can even just uh, send back a Shadow Assassin for card draw, which we'll get to in a moment. On a niche scenario, you might throw back a Green Glade Duo because you kind of need to set up certain trades or something really strange in niche scenarios because the Conspirator has two HP, but that's a bit too in-depth. Uh, Retreat, I haven't had much of a chance to really navigate this card too often, but it can be used to protect units, it can be used to pull back units that can combo for more damage, and it can also be used as like kind of like cheeky blocking your opponent's uh, unit and then saving your unit, saving yourself some face damage and being super annoying. Transfusion, all around very powerful. You're going to find this use this card very useful in a ton of situations. So just keep your eyes out for this card. There's going to be some way to play it. And Noxian and Fervor, usually used to deny your opponent's value from their removal, as well as pushing damage. It can be quite oppressive at times. Uh, quick tip, try to like look for the opportunities where your opponent's tapped under, or they kind of commit the resource first. Usually most of the time, if you're on the attack token and you're attacking in, it's going to be your opponent who has to react. So that way you can kind of get your Noxian and Fervors off. Try and use it towards the end for a finish, or for, if needed, clearing a very high value uh, target for your opponent. Solitary Monk is an all around really great Ionia card. 3 mana 2 2 with a draw 1 card is very powerful. And we do run Navori Conspirator and Retreat. 
Solitary Monk. Uh, usually in most matchups, you're looking to try and play this on an empty board. Three mana, four three with the loose is very powerful. There will be some niche scenarios where you can flip back some cards for more combos. So a lot of it's very synergistic, right? Uh, but you can brick every now and then, so be careful with Solitary Monk. Uh, Will of Ionia is a very powerful Ionia card. You could, there's no denying this. It could, this could be a three of, but it's just a two of. Uh, being able to deny your opponent's uh, big unit, or if they play like something big on a turn, you can just Will of Ionia it and really punish them. Decimate two of to finish off your opponent towards the end. I do hope that was quick enough, guys. Let's go play some games and have a fantastic day. Uh, we're seeing a lot of Brom Swain, hey. That's been a thing. Also, guys, just a Bon Yip the Cat. Super annoying. Super annoying. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play me neither, buddy. Yeah, playing Disciple there, unfortunately, would have been the better play, but who would have known he was running Thorny Toad? I should have assumed such things. Uh, no good activators here. Yeah, I don't think you ever keep a hand that looks anything like this. Especially against Heimerdinger, that is. You always want to fish for the one drop or Disciple or a mixture of all three. Uh, so no Thermo Beam. I don't think you'd ever not Thermo Beam that against an aggro deck. Uh, so he commits mana, most likely not sitting on Thermo Beam. So I will play Green Glade here. He'd be pretty five head to have not Thermo Beam the precious pet. One drops would have been very nice here. One drop would have been very nice. This is fine. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford to uh, play anything. Um, at this point, what's the punish for playing Disciple? Get excited. Demo Beam. I have lots of activators for Disciple. I'm probably just going to play Legion Grenadier. We should have just played it this turn anyway. Wow, he's sitting on a very strange hand. Very, very strange hand. I don't know how to feel about it. Okay, so now we always play Disciple. 110% we play Disciple. Yeah, I um didn't get a good read for his hand. This is fine. I don't know why he wouldn't hit the Green Glade duo. I didn't realize he had no cards in hand. So unless he would have drawn two spells there. We should do this now, so I can actually Navori Conspirator it immediately next turn. Obviously we don't get those sweet Green Glade buffs, but that's not the real issue here. So I want to actually not flip the Disciple, but flip the Impure Demolitionist back to the hand. For a lot more reasons. We do have Transfusion, right? So it's actually impossible. I think this game's already done. It's like realistically nothing you can do. Um, if he's going to do nothing... Actually, there's plenty of reasons for me to develop this turn. I should always do this now. Because he'll be forced to use some sort of weird resources into it. Like this, and then I'll just like transfusion... ...there to spread my uh, buffs out. This to me makes a lot of sense means that he can't get excited this. If I was to put it all into Green Glade, he could definitely get excited it. Now he's like, the resources he has to be able to use on this turn are quite awkward. Like Thermo Beam, he could have Thermo Beamed it prior. We may have overcommitted this turn, but this is a really comfortable number. And having Decimate in hand means it's almost impossible for him to make any plays this turn. As soon as he plays like single card, like this, it's over. That's going to be 8 and 1, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. This is the deck to climb right now. All well, everyone's still experimenting. Plus, Heimerdinger is pretty prevalent, so it's good to punish that. I love this Riot Spotify playlist, but I wish I could adjust it. 
Because I'm sick of them. I'm sick of the pentakill songs. They're a bit too intense for me. Pool party. More my jam. Okay, just keep the curve. Always usually keeping cards like Green Glade in the opening hand. Next question, what do we want to sacrifice to the Thermo Beam? Most of the time it's usually a precious pet. The elusive can be useful for other reasons. So this time we're gonna be not as lucky. He's gonna have actually an early game. Cool. Um, he's on the first move here. I get to play Disciple for free. This is good. It makes his, this next turn very strong for us. Uh, what's the most ideal play? It's never an open attack. It's possibly Green Glade into a Blade Scout. I can't beat all his cards, but I can beat some of his cards. This would just beat kind of get excited. Most likely he's going to clear something. Just wait and see what that card will be. Flash seems like an odd play to make. I don't think there's any reason to really do that. Unless he's looking for discard fodder. Okay, that's fine. What I'd hate to see now is I would hate to see a Mystic Shot. That's going to make this game very hard. Looks like there's no Mystic Shot unless he's just kind of waiting until I attack. Cool, that's... 25% of his HP gone. Will on his turn. Okay, what would be the what would be the realistic play to make here? I don't think we ever will that. But I do think we flip. Be back. If he doesn't swing here, it means he has no answer in hand to protect the solitary monk. I need no weapon. Question is, do I want to kind of sacrifice my green glade off until he's, um... Make him force him to use twin disciplines now in case he has Heimerdinger in hand and completely slow him down. I'll take my chances here. If he uses twin disciplines now, there's no way he's doing Heimerdinger next turn. This was like kind of always happening, right? Unfortunately, I didn't have enough mana to kind of do a mixture of cards. So now there's no real point for this to have the elusive tag. I don't think it's going to be relevant. But we're going to play Twin Disciplines this turn. Twin, uh, sorry, Crimson Disciple this turn. Ah, this is a good find, actually. This is like a really dumb stat line, which makes it really awkward for him to deal with. I wonder if I would have been better off considering kind of playing a bit slower this turn. Hmm. What's the move here? Fake hero. We're actually just going to play Shadow Assassin, I think. And kind of submit to Static Shock or a few other cards. There's no way I don't play my cards out, right? And I just full swing with everything except uh, Crimson Disciple. Even allowing Legion and Grandia to hit the face is pretty powerful. It's like the one card I would have, would have preferred not to have seen. And this just gets chumped, so I don't think there's a real amazing trade here. So this just swings and he has to block it with the 3-2. So we're kind of, we're playing a little bit slower at the moment. I think that's going to work out very well for us. Because he's got, a, he's got a hand of four and he hasn't been dropping multiple spells. Again, I think I just tanked this. Um, I should definitely flip back the, sh uh, flip, we should definitely flip back the Shadow Assassin to keep our card advantage tremendous against him. Okay. Again, I don't think it matters that we have the elusive tag here. I'm actually going to play this now. I'm going to keep three mana banked up. Am I? Yes. I am. 
Again, we're going to play some cards. So he might play Heimerdinger now, but I can just kind of swing at that point immediately. He keeps on playing his Flash of Brilliances, hoping to find something, but I think a majority of the cards that you find from Flash of Brilliance don't... Cannot do a tremendous amount unless he finds like Dawn and Dusk maybe and plays it immediately. We, he did find one earlier, but he discarded it. Okay, what do I do about this? That was actually a pretty amazing find. As I was saying, usually you don't find very amazing cards. Do I ever flip back one of my units here? Unfortunately not. both of the elusive units seems okay if you were to be playing and get excited this turn okay easy commitment uh, we're gonna will that now fortunately i don't get the value from the crimson disciple that's fine we are clearing the shadow assassin suddenly i feel like i'm in the back foot that flash of billions is actually insane i choked on my own words guys Definitely choked on my own words. Okay. He's probably sitting on deny and stuff. He could have found anything. He could have found complete garbage there. So I have to decimate. Even if he has deny, which it's very likely that he does. Okay. I guess he doesn't need to deny this one. It's a play here. Fake hero. Fortunately, it looks like a will in the Heimerdinger. That's a very good draw. also a very good draw we should swing now chooses to block the elusive unit so at this point what's my move here my move is to wait and see what he does He's not going to let the turn just end like that, is he? So he might. No deny. Will. I guess he's looking to kill me next turn. This is a bit of a five head play. Why would you do that? he has to get excited in hand and he always wins the stack at that point the mind games might trip him up though <laughs> feels awkward man That will was very powerful against us. Still, I think we have to go for it, right? I'm going to mute him because I'm going to get a little bit tilted after this one. Ah. Will, okay. Means I'm not dying, actually. I should have replayed this now. I 
need a unit, a playable unit this turn. That's insane. That's actually probably the most insane top deck I can find. For so many reasons. Damn it. I was really strong. Okay, I can still find some cards. That's not gonna do it. A little bit unlucky there. He made some really good plays. Why is he swinging with a Heimerdinger? A bit of BM. A little bit cringy that he kind of found the answers that he needed and that one flash of brilliance kind of cost me the game. But I guess willing my own units from that wouldn't have made much sense at all. Oh, that sucks. Just as I was kind of shit talking flash of brilliance, he absolutely punished us for it. God damn, Bon Yip, you are incredibly annoying. Um, this actually should be an open attack. You can develop units to block the Blade Scout anyway. I'm gonna threaten the Vile Feast on Blade Scout by doing this. Okay. I'm going to play uh, Green Glade Doer here because I considered it's floating mana for Solitary Monk but without actual actual good activators in hand, I don't want to float my mana. So this is a pretty simple f ignore the board and then play Solitary Monk. In this matchup, I actually want to play around Battle Feast the best I can. One of my first ways of doing that is by promoting a Solitary Monk. Kind of like makes all the mana I used previously kind of irrelevant and I should have probably not played Green Glade Duo that turn. I didn't plan my turns very far ahead, effectively. Uh, the most appropriate thing I could do here is to play Green Glade followed by Green Glade now. And just kind of hope he has no Vile Feast. Yeah, this has got to be the line. I could probably go a little, bit, a little bit less committal and play Blade Scout for sure. That might be a bit more appropriate. I miss out on no damage, literally. So that green glade there, playing that there, wouldn't have made much sense. Okay, well he has no Vile Feast. That's huge. Let's count the cards. Four cards in hand, no Vile Feast. Okay, let's count the cards. Five cards in hand, possible Vile Feast. That was from the top. No Vile Feast. Played Callista from the top. I'm gonna demolition this. He's gonna abuse the fact that he has no Vile Feast in hand. Huge card reads, right? And who do we block here? We block, block every- nothing. I think we just block nothing, guys. If I'm not mistaken. I could probably block the uh, Bark Beast, actually. We're going to kill him next turn no matter what, so we'll just block the Bark Beast. He might have an answer, but it doesn't matter because we're never going to be pushing damage with non-elusive units. It's going to be strictly elusive. He has one draw to make any difference to this board state. Unless he's sitting on, um, unless he's sitting on Withering Whale, but I don't think, I think we'll be fine. Cool, so this is a pretty obvious open attack. The beauty is that we're threatening lethal. So we can always be the one to respond to everything it does and we have tons of cards in hand to do stuff. He tons of cards. So 
So this should always be a Noxium Fervor. Always an Oxygen Fervor. Use the HP to your advantage. And since he's already committed a Vengeance to it, it just seems like the most obvious choice. All played, buddy. Look at that. Nine and two. Insane. Where does that put us right now? 40 LP, Platinum 3. That's dope.